DIC has moved to revoke uh, Heritage Bank's uh, license. Mm. But you remember some weeks ago when we began this conversation exactly. from the angle of bank recapitalization, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. was this fear that some banks will have to go under. The very well. Now very we're well. seeing it come into reality. I, I think Heritage Bank, the, the, the Heritage Bank problem didn't start today. When that bank was floated, there was a lot of rancor because there was this nation that it was a politically arranged bank that was established. The way the bank got its license, the, the ba buying over of some existing bank that the bank buy over, and the, or the, the way that the bank came into existence without completing certain regulation uh, expectation from, from, the, from the regulator was quite very surprising because at that point in time when the bank came into buy, they said it was just because of the political heavy weight behind that bank's that make it to come to existence. So a lot of people raise eyebrow. And when they got the license, they got a, na a, a national outlook bank. And we are like, a new bank that is just coming cannot just have a national outlook bank. Why can't you start with regional banking first? Then before you now go into that large uh, aspect of financial uh, institution that you want to be. So I'm not surprised that they are now falling under. I'm not surprised they are now being shut down. I'm not surprised that their relations have been vocation because we said it right from the beginning that when this bank started, it, it started just like it, from the from nowhere, and it began to spread. But we also know that it was as a result of the political arrangement that goes with it. But right now it has been shut. We just hope that NDIDIC will pay all the depositors their money. And a lot of people who bank with that bank, who are customer of that bank, have also raised high bank because you go to some of their branches. As if they are not functioning, you begin to ask questions. What is happening to this bank? And nobody will give you concrete reason why what is happening there is happening there. But right now, that CBN have like, revoked their licenses, we just hope that the bank management and all that customer will get a relief from what they have been able to uh, transaction they have done with the bank over the years that they existed. Now, uh, let's talk about it also from the angle of this recapitalization mm -hmm. for a new capital base. Mm -hmm. CBN has put on the table. Mm -hmm a stress test mechanism mm -hmm. for these banks exactly is it one of those moves that is would i call it most crucial at this point mm. or <laughs> going to the the real realities of our economy exactly. it, 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 it's the for capital definitely it's the reality of our economy that's one if you remember two weeks ago cbn released the numbers of banks in the country they list the taiwan bank tai two bank and the tai three bank they also list all the multi banks i checked through all this list I didn't see Heritage Bank there. That was when I began to be very suspicious. What is happening to Heritage Bank? I checked there was no Heritage Bank. The first seven uh, banks that were the Taiwan Bank, concrete, strong, we know them. This Tai Two, that there. And last year, I I am some of my colleagues, economists, we look at some uh, we look at the study of some of banks, or look at their, their 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 capital base. We knew the first one, the second one, the third one. But Heritage was no nowhere to be found. That's like really mentioned. Make the cut for tier three. Exactly. So what is happening to this bank? So when CBN begin to release some stronger measure in terms of when to because the, the core message of Cardoso when he came into power was that I have just three missions to do: price stability, bank financial bank stabilization, as well as avoiding uh, uh, what they call uh, 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 this funding of uh, areas that CBN supposed not to go into. There's a maybe there's a way to frame that particular funding because in the past CBN was funding agriculture, was funding some which CBN in real time supposed not to be engaging themselves in. So he made mention of that. And we look critically at his word financial stabilization and financial institution stabilization. We begin to say, okay, this guy is coming for the banks. So when recapitalization came into being, well, like, we are not surprised that he's coming with this this particular policy. But how he ensure that it is not real good? With politics, that's our being our pay, and that's what we are seeing expressing today. Because if you remember how banks came into being in Nigeria after 1986, when we became to favor IMF and World Bank, when we now favor four strategy or finance strategy above in the selection strategy, this is a topic for another day. Sure, it's a political economy discussion. Because when IMF and World Bank came into being in Nigeria, they encouraged Nigeria to be opening financial institutions up and down as against industries, and government was focusing on establishing banks as against establishing factories that got us into big trouble when we now begin to establish financial institutions without much thing that will give them liquidity because what will give liquidity to bank is industries making products selling products and bringing money back because bank on down don't generate money is what they collect from others they 
turn around, give it to other to bring more to them, and they give out. So that's why we have issue. So when I, what I'm trying to point out is that when we now concentrate so much on financial institution as against factories and against industry, we begin to fall into problems. So when banks are now being springed up here and there, the banks were having issues. If you reflect back to when the federal government began to implement TSA, what happens to those banks? A lot of the banks begin to see way to lay off staff because what was giving most of their money was the government money they are collecting. They don't know how to generate money on their own. You could also remember when subsidies uh, improved was taking place, whereby banks were now giving loans to people to uh, bring in for into the country. When government began to investigate that issue, a lot of banks had issue with the money because government said they are not going to pay anybody that cannot give verification of what they have imported in the country. So that was the beginning of the thinking in our financial sector, whereby most banks were announced, okay, let us think properly on how to generate money instead of waiting for free money from political appointees uh, or, and others that will just be bringing money to them. And now, Cardoso have come with another policy that will ensure that banks are real banks, not just banks waiting for somebody to be bringing money to them, but that banks will generate money by themselves and for their customers. Now, another worry of stakeholders, mm. despite an intervention by mm. the House of Reps reassuring mm. depositors that their funds are safe, mm. is the fact that the NDIC has said that whatever sums you have in the account, mm. at most a maximum of five million will be paid. That, that's for someone who have millions of naira. But others have hundreds of thousands. We already know what NDIC will do. NDIC did something for one of those, uh, what they call community banks recently in Yaya, one of those microfinance banks. And how much were they giving people? Less than 50,000 naira. There's no way you want to shout and cry <laughs> over it. That is what they can afford. You get it? So, but we just hope that people who have money in that bank, they will give them 5 million naira, as they said. Others, they will give them their own. But it's a lesson for us. And this is not the first time bank will be going under like this. We have had the Savannah banks in the time past. We have had other banks that have gone under in the part time past. But the people who operate our banks, they are economists like us, they are financial gurus, but the interest that come into bank establishment, we need to rethink it. What is the essence of establishing banks? What is the model for banks to operate? It is just a reason that Nigerian banks begin to go outside to begin to go and buy shares and have their shares to be traded on international stock exchange to also bring them money. But we need to rethink our banking sector so that we can have a stabilized and stable bank. So that because liquidity that we are talking about will not be gotten from paper. It is gotten from productivity when we give value to productivities. So it is not paper money that we're talking about, we're talking about value that we're bringing additional to banks so that when banks give out money to the real sector, the real sector will bring back the money back and they will collect their profit or whatever interest they want to collect and give to others to also bless our bank generate money. But in our own climate, banks are waiting for free money from government, collect government revenue, collect government tariff, collect government. That is not how to generate money at way bank works. Now, as a depositor, mm. what's your call to depositors? What are the indices to look out for before mm. you carry your funds and dump them in a certain bank and miss this new recapitalization plan by the CBN? Do we look out for the tier <laughs> 1, tier 2, tier 3 cat uh, categorizations by the CBN? Or what other indices can depositors use to check that this bank is going to last the test of time? Definitely, there are one thing that most Nigerians consumer, bank consumers need to look out for. When banks are not turning services into a different category of uh, products, I won't mention those products because they didn't pay for it. You know how banks create a product, account for this, you get social amount of money, account for this. They attract customers. At the end of the day, the customer will put those money in there. Before you know it, they say that particular product is not working again. What happened to their money? So, bank customers should be very careful when they are seeing banks who are throwing up all manner of advert, all manner of product services, that they know that in real fact, it's they are just going to, it's like, a, it's like what we call local uh, look at uh, uh, look at uh, uh, literary turn and kalo kalo. You put fifty thousand that they tell you are going to get hundred million, and you ask how. So because bank customers should be looking out for that. The other thing, the bank customers should, one customer should be looking out for the update from CBN because CBN of today now is now doing every two two weeks update on their website. Although many of us may not be able to go to that, but two two weeks update on what is happening. They are releasing regulation. Yesterday they released another regulation to guide banks on what they need to be doing, particularly on exchange of naira to dollar and the rest of them so we're coming to that in a bit as well so bank customers should be looking out for update from bank from cbn on what is happening to all these banks as they go on then bank customers also should be very careful in terms of branches that banks are opening there are some branches that they open it's an outpost it's not a branch to take some of the rigorous activities or services that the main branch should be taking so they should be very careful in that regard now, and on the mention of uh, the 